Hi there, your computer friend Connie here. Let's talk about 10 must know tips and tricks for Microsoft OneNote. First tip is organize your notebook. So I'm in the Project MC notebook. I'm in a section called 365 Learning Hub and I have some pages that really don't belong here. They're better suited to another section. So I wanna divide them up. So I'm gonna go to the top here where I have my little tabs for sections and hit the plus sign and I'm gonna type in my new section name. Now you'll notice on my screen, I'm showing my sections at the top and on the left, you might not be depending on your view. So know that you can also right click on the left to create a new section there as well. So now I've got my new section here. I'm gonna go back to the Learning Hub and I'm gonna take any pages that belong in that new section and drag them over there. Now, of course, I can take more than one page at a time. I click on one and shift click on another one or control click if they're not side by side. So I have two pages selected right now and I'm gonna drag it over to the info session tab. All right, so now I'm in my info session tab and you'll see that I have a number of pages that are now here. So I'm just gonna get rid of this one here. We don't need it. And we have it or nicely organized. Now, another way to organize is to sort your pages. So at the top corner here of my page area, I can say sort it alphabetically, which it looks like it already is. So I'm gonna choose a different sort, let's say date created and that changes the order. Let's go back to the Learning Hub and this looks like it's alphabetical. So let's go here and just choose alphabetical again and see what happens. It goes a reverse order now. And let's try date modified. So a few different ways to, to order your pages. So try that out. Our next tip on Microsoft OneNote is how to customize your page layouts. So we can color our pages or we can put lines or grids on our pages. So let's take a look at that. So I'm on the Twitter post page. I'm gonna to go to my draw menu. And from my draw menu, I'm gonna choose format background and I'm gonna choose page color. And let's say for my social media stuff, I wanna do a green background. So let's do that for Twitter. Let's go to the Facebook page here and do the same background. So it kind of helps you keep consistent with something if you want. The LinkedIn. Oh, it has a background, but let's just change the color of that one to a green background. So another way to change the layout of your page is to put lines or a grid behind that page. And so theme days, I put some lines on this one as an example, but let's go to the format background and just check out the other lines here. So I could say grid, and you might do that if you're drawing something or you're using your handwriting um, on a page as well. So let's go to that tip next. I'm gonna talk to you about how you can use OneNote for handwritten notes or your drawings. So let's add a page and we'll put our drawings on here. Now let's choose format background so that we can line up our drawing nicely. So now that I have my grid on my page, let's go to the draw toolbar, pick a color and start writing. So this might be handy to do when you're on a tablet, your iPad or a phone, smartphone. Um, I'm doing it on my computer, so I may not be able to draw or handwrite as nicely on this, but we'll give it a try. Not quite on the line, but somewhat close to it. I can also change my colors and let's put a shape. Let's put a box around that name there. And you see how the lines maybe help me line things up better. Another cool thing about the drawings or a handwriting in particular that OneNote will do is it will actually let you convert your handwriting to text. So I wrote a bit of a sentence here so we could try it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, on the draw toolbar, we're gonna go to this lasso over here on the left, and we're gonna put a lasso around whatever's hand, whatever handwriting we want to convert. Make sure that it puts a border around all the words and letters. And then we're gonna go to the draw toolbar again and ink to text and see how it works. Yeah, so it liked my handwriting. So let's try it with my name here. Still got the lasso going there. Let's just grab my name and it does have it the does have the border around the whole thing so I can go ink to text and yeah. So I'm not always this neat, uh, but uh, so it may not always work for us, but it's kind of cool that it does. So you can hand write on your uh, tablet or your phone and then convert it on your desktop within OneNote. 
The next example I want to show you is how to use OneNote to extract text from pictures. And so I have a picture here, no regrets, that we're going to get the text off of. Um, but we're also going to do this with a PDF. So you could actually put a PDF document into your OneNote page and then extract the text from that PDF in the same manner. So let's try this. So if I right click on the picture, it gives me an option to copy the text from the picture. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to click over here and paste it so I can right click and paste. And there you go. Now let's try this with the PDF. So I have a couple of examples for us to look at. And so by the way, a PDF example is a matter of you taking yeah, that file that's a PDF from your computer and dragging it into your OneNote page. That's how easy it is to get a PDF in here. And so to get the look I have, you're choosing the option that comes up that says print out. And so that way it prints out that PDF onto the page. So that might be good enough for you. you that's all you need. But if you want to get the text off that PDF, all you're going to do is right click on it and choose copy text from this page of the printout. And then we're going to scroll down to where we have some blank and we're going to choose paste. Easy to do, isn't it? Now, this is a cool trick. If you have a PDF where, you know, you do want to extract some of the text from it, and this is a very fast way for you to do it. Just throw the PDF in a page, extract it like I just did, and then you have that text that you can work with. It may not be that you're keeping it in OneNote forever. It's just for the purpose of, hey, I got to get the text off of it. My next tip is all about how to save time with templates in Microsoft OneNote. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the templates that Microsoft OneNote gives us and then we're going to look at how to create our own as well. So I'm in the classroom notebook. I'm in a, on, in a section called meetings and it happened to be on a page that's using a OneNote template. So let's recreate that now. So I'm going to go to add page and when I add page it gives me a blank page. I don't want that. I want that template. So we're going to go to insert menu and then page templates and then we get the side panel on the right there's lots of templates to choose from i'm going to open up the business ones and pick a meeting one but you you can check out the other ones as well simple meeting notes number two so there's a template that i can use each time i have a meeting and so i can just change the title to suit the meeting so let's say this so here's our august meeting let's say we want to put in uh, something for our September meeting. Just click on that template again and again just change the title. Now you might want your own style of meeting template. There might be some things that are always the same and you'd rather have it already in that template. So we're going to save our own template next. And to do that I have an example for us here. So this agenda template you can kind of see that I typed this in myself. You're going to learn about tables which is what I use to type a lot of this. So I prefer this layout for my meeting agenda. Agendas. So what we're going to do is go to the bottom right here on, in the templates area and choose save current page as template. Once we name the template, we can save it and it'll be under my templates. If you choose it as a default, that means every time you add a page in this section, this is the page you're getting. So let's try that. So I'm going to click on default, save and saying, hey, if there's any other templates in, in place right now, it's going to override them. That's fine. So we'll say yes. So now if I go to my templates, you'll see a uh, meeting agenda test is showing there. So I could choose that and it'll add a page for me, but actually I don't even have to. Let me close up the templates altogether. Forget that they're even there. And if I go now to say add page, then it added a third page with that agenda template. Every time I hit add page, in fact, it just keeps adding it. So I no longer have a blank page to add. So if I want that blank page back, because I changed my mind about this, I go to page templates. And then at the bottom here, it says it's using the meeting agenda test as my template. So click on the drop down there and choose default blank and it'll override it again. And so now if I go add page, I get a blank page. If I want my my template back, I choose this one. All right, so no need to retype stuff or copy and paste when you've got the ability to create templates. Use the ones that are there, create your own. All right, so you saw in that template I had some tables. So let's talk about how easy it is for you to make a table within OneNote. And I want you to see that uh, you do have some examples of tables showing in here in my example page. But let's just add one right now so that you can see how to do it from scratch. So I'm just going to click somewhere and I'm in my insert menu here and table. I'll just choose whatever number of rows and columns I want. And then I can just certainly type 
and I'm tabbing along and it kind of goes from one cell to another in that table. Now, another trick about tables is that if I go and I wanna make a table while I'm typing, I can do so by just using the tab key. So let's say I have a table and I have items and then I want the cost beside it. So I hit the tab key and it made another cell for my table. I hit the tab key, key again and it just keeps making my columns for me. Now if I hit enter, it gives me a row and then you just add in your information. Now a couple of cool things about tables is that uh, we can certainly add more to our table. So I'm going to click on the table I already have here. And once I'm in a table, I have a menu at the top for tables and I can insert to the right or I can, then as you can see, insert left and all the other directions and so on. And then how I got the color shading on that top row, by the way, is I just highlighted it and chose the shading so it looks a little bit different. I like using tables with pictures because it helps line up my pictures. And if I don't want people to know it's a table, then I can certainly click on that table and go hide borders and then you won't even know it's a table. Look at that, right? So I'll go back to hide borders. So I put my borders back in there because I like working with it while I have it in place here. And I'm gonna just show you a quick example of adding a picture into a table and why, why I think this is a great idea for you to try when you're trying to line up your pictures. So my dog is what I wanna put in here. All right, so you saw how it's dragged that picture right into that cell there and it lines it up so nicely. So I'll turn the borders off and now as you can see, things are lined up nice. And even in the table, one other thing you can do is you can actually, uh, I put my to do, to do check marks on here. So these are tags and that you can get from here, a to do tag and so I can check things off as I do them. And then I can even sort things if I want to. And so if I go back to the table and sort whatever column I'm on, it's gonna sort that column. So deadline, it's sorted. Let's try sort by the task name and it sorts by task name. So lots you can do in tables. All right, your next tip is to try out the audio files or even the dictate. So I could be doing this from my phone, or tablet, computer, and how I go about this is from the home ribbon, I go over to where it says transcribe, and from transcribe, I can say that I want to record audio. And then again, from any of my devices, I can replay that audio by double clicking on it and having it replay back to me. Now, dictate is one of my favorite ones. Dictate is uh, it's right beside that transcribe button and that allows you to dictate to OneNote so it does the typing for you and you don't have to type. How cool would that be? So I'm gonna click here and turn dictate on. Dictate is now on. And if I wanna put punctuation at the end of the sentence, I can use the word that I want, such as period, new line, that moved me to the next line on my for my typing. Now I don't know how to backspace or get rid of something, so that might have to be done manually. And if I do want to stop it, I would have to stop it by clicking on the dictate a button again. So try that out. I don't like typing that much, so uh, dictate's pretty handy. Okay, your next tip, I kind of give you a quick peek at already, and that is using your tags. And a very valuable tag that you may want to use is the to-do tag, so you can check something off. So I'm on the page of my Twitter posts, and let's say I want to keep track of which of these posts I've used, highlight all of these, and then go to my tags well, at the top here in my home ribbon, and choose the to-do tag, and it puts that little checkbox in front of them all, and so if I've done that Twitter post, I can just simply check it off. So it becomes a fast way for me to know what have I done, what have I left, have left to do. Now there are other tags that I could use. Let's go here again and see that you have important and question. And then the ones underneath that uh, social media post, that's one that I put in there myself. So that's a custom tag you can create. And then you have a few other ones. So there's a lot to choose from. So I'm gonna just choose uh, important and remember for later in my next example here. So let's just click on the line here and then I can go to my tag and you see control two would also be my shortcut for that tag. And let's go to this line and choose remember for later. And so remember for later. So as you notice the few of them are highlighted, it'll highlight the entire paragraph that you're in or 
Yeah, so wherever it finds it enters when it's stopping the highlight. If you want more information on tags or how to customize your own tags, take a look at some of my videos that I have on this channel. Now, your next tip is to make sure you take advantage of search and you can search for words or phrases, or you could search for the tags that you just used uh, within your notebook. So let's try the words and phrases first, and then we'll try tag search. So I'm going to just close my template column here on the right. So I have more room. And then over on the top right there, it says search notebooks. And I'm going to type in a word overwhelm. And if you notice, there's a lot of different pages that it finds overwhelm. In fact, overwhelm has been written in my notebooks 133 times apparently. And if you look at the right side here, it's telling you what the notebook name is and what the section is. So let's say I wanted it only to be within the notebook that I'm in right now, the project notebook. I can change it at the top here to say rather than all notebooks, this notebook. And now I get a much smaller list of options to choose from for this word. So let's say it's the struggles one. And then if you notice uh, in here, it's highlighting the word overwhelm. Now the other words are highlighted because I was using the highlighter to highlight some of this text. Uh, so that's, that's why it's yellow there. Okay, let's try another word. This time in the search, I actually search for something that is within a picture. So it actually searches for words within pictures as well. And uh, I narrowed down my search, by the way, to just be the notebook uh, for the classroom because that's where I have the example. So let's just, it found the one instance of it. So let's just click on this. I want you to see that it's actually highlighting the word plain small in the picture. All right, you did some uh, tags in the previous example. So let's do a search for a tag. Let's search for the important tags. So the search for tags is right beside the, the tags button. There's a little magnifying glass. So click on that. Gives you a tag summary column on the right here. I'm gonna change what it's searching in. So it says search this section. So right now I'm in the example for demo part of my classroom. And I'm gonna say, let's search the entire notebook, this notebook. And I want to search based on the tag. I have a lot of tags. And look at all the important tags I have. So let's just go tag important notes, click there and it finds that tag that has that star beside it. Now let's go to the project notebook and see if we can find the important notes in there. So I just unclicked the tag search and went to the project notebook and then I clicked that tag search again and made sure it says search this notebook. See how it's showing the important tags that I made uh, a remember for later tag that I also created and a bunch of to do's that'll just collapse. Let's, let's talk about the path. Let's click on that. And now it jumps to that place where it put that important tag members can utilize. It jumps to that spot. So very cool that you can search based on the tags. And that's another reason why you want to start using those tags. All right. For my final tip, I want to show you how a table of contents could look in your OneNote notebook. And so I'm in the classroom notebook right now, and I'm in a table of contents section, TOC section. And you can see, I have a page that says level one training. So these are the topics I would cover in my level one training. And there's also some example notes and I'll click on these in a minute. But before I do, let me go to level two training and you see there's different topics. So that's why I have a section for this. I also have an example area for it. So everything actually has a lot of different links built into it, doesn't it? So I'm going to go back to level one training and I want to show you how this is going to jump around for us. So let's say part of level one training is learning about handwriting. So I'm going to click on handwriting and that jumps to the page called handwriting. Now let me go back. So the back button up top here, and I want to talk about, you know, tables. So let's click on tables and it jumps to the page on tables. And I'll go back. So you see how this table of contents is helping me jump to other areas, either within the same notebook, if I want, within the same section, within different sections, or it could be into a completely different notebook as well. So I'm going to go back to our project notebook and we'll create a sample link page in there. So the 365 and I made a page called all steps to membership. I put a few links in there now. So you can see if I go launch membership group, it goes to that page and then I can go back. Once you get a membership, it goes to that page, but I don't have to always make it go to a specific page. I can have it go to a paragraph on a page or again to another section of my notebook altogether if I want to. So let's go to a paragraph of a page. All right, I'm on a heading that says, so you can keep up. It's one of the reasons I have the membership that I do to help my clients keep up with technology. So if I want to link to that in my first page, I'm going to right click on that 
heading and I'm going to say copy link to paragraph. And now I'm going to go back to that all steps and I'm going to paste that in there. And so now when I click on it, it's not only going to go to that page, but it's also going to go to that paragraph on that page. So that's kind of the beauty of the links is it jumps to whatever area you want within whatever notebook, whatever section um, that you need it to. All right. So those are your tips. Hope you enjoy that. Try them out. Thanks.